Guys, I just built a super simple floating head for the Z-axis on my DIY CNC plasma table build. You gotta check this thing out. So for those of you that don't know, your floating head is part of your Z-axis or your up and down control of your torch height, um, which rides on your X-axis. So what the floating head does is it, uh, it sets the initial uh, pierce height when you're starting a cut. So let's pretend this T handle here is my plasma torch. It mounts to the face of the Z axis, all right? And then as the software locates a pierce point on your work surface, it'll drive your, your Z axis down until your torch comes in contact with the work surface. Now there's a spring here, and what happens is this will engage, this will hit your work surface, and then it'll continue to drive the Z-axis down until that work surface or that mounting surface engages this switch. Once that switch is engaged, the software will stop the down motion and then it'll raise it back up to a predetermined height above your work surface. That ensures that your plasma torch is always at the correct height for a pierce above your work surface. Let me show you how I put this thing together. All right, let me go ahead and remove this from the Z-axis and I'll show you exactly how I put it together. All right, so here you can see this plate was actually what originally came on the Z-axis. So I just was able to take this and mount everything to it. So right here on the side, let me see if I can, let me go to the workbench and do this over here. Turn the light on. All right, so again, this, this black plate here is original to the z-axis that I purchased. Right here, this silver rail is just a short piece of linear rail. There's one on each side. So there's one there. It's, it's trying to do this one-handed. This rail right here, and another one right there. That was like a seven inch short piece of rail that I bought and I cut it down to size to be exactly the height of this plate. It came with one linear bearing, and then I obviously purchased another one for this side. And then I took a piece of, this isn't, this is just a piece of, of quarter inch thick plastic. Um, it's not Delrin, it's just a cheaper version of Delrin. Um, I literally had this stuff lying around from past projects, so I don't even know how long I've had it. Anyway, just cut it to size, and then I drilled and marked the four holes for each linear bearing, and then that allows the whole thing to slide up and down. Then what I did was these two screws here go to a piece of aluminum angle iron here with a bolt through it. And then that just holds in place this spring. And then there's another piece of aluminum plate here that I drilled and tapped the top of, the, of this plate, and that mounts right there. Focus, come on. There we go. That goes right there. And then this bolt again, just locates that spring. What that spring does then is once this touches off, as it raises back up, it'll push the plate back down. And then I've just mounted this, this switch. I, again, I just drilled and tapped a hole into that linear rail, which if you've ever drilled into a linear rail and tried to tap it, that's a bitch. That is like a hardened, piece of steel or hardened piece of metal. And yeah, it likes to, uh, it likes to eat your, your taps. As you can see by these holes here, I tried to, I tried to drill and tap this hole to mount this or to mount the, uh, this top plate too. That didn't really work out so well. Uh, these red caps are just, they're little plastic bumpers. I'm going to I'm trying to come up with a better way because as you can see that likes to come loose. But that now is your 
your touch sensor, your touch off, your, your, your floating head. And that's really it guys. Super simple floating head for your Z axis on your CNC plasma table. That thing is really gonna make for some very nice initial pierces when starting your cuts. I mean, and it, the whole thing just operates really smooth. I'm really happy with the way that turned out. Again, keeping up with the cost. So that linear rail, like I said, that was like a seven, seven and a half inch linear rail, and it came with a bearing. That was $17.99. Uh, the other bearing, just the bearing alone, that was another $14.99. I'll leave links to both down below. Uh, that means total was $32.98. Now, this switch that the that switch that the floating head engages, I had that. Um, I tend to keep switches and relays and crap like that on hand. I mean, I am into electronics. Um, I actually had that. I bought that switch actually to fix a water softener. It was the wrong switch. But you could pick those up for you know a couple bucks a piece. And then the spring, again, just stuff that I had lying around. The same with same with that aluminum piece here and the aluminum angle iron. It's all just really out of the scrap bin. So that gives me a six day total uh, of 533.12. That's, again, not bad. I'm really happy with how this thing is all coming together. Next, this thing's going tactical.